Hello everybody, Average Gamer, and welcome to another brief tutorial on uh, commodity trading, as well as commodity production, use, stocks, and trades. So basically the actual production tab down here. So uh, in a previous episode, I kind of went over the resource tab real quick and easy, and told you generally what each one of these does, and what this generally is. What I thought I'd do, because I've been asked a lot of questions about just the intricacies of trades, and... Uh, and the production tab here, what colors mean. I thought I would do another video. So, with that in mind, um, what I want to do is talk about, well, goods trade. The goods trade itself. What exactly the goods trade is. So, with that in mind, I'm going to break down exactly what everything is first before we even get into stuff. So, in this screen, obviously, as I've mentioned before, here's all the different resources and you can lock each one out or not if you want to. Here is the production. This is the amount of for, of the amount of goods your country can produce for a set good. Meaning, right now, for timber, for example, uh, you see two different colors, dark blue and light blue. The dark blue is our actual current production. So right now we're producing 22,161 cubic feet or tons, depending on uh, how much. I think this is cubic feet for four, uh, uh, let me look here. I think cubic feet is, yep, yeah, cubic feet for, um, or cubic meter, sorry, for, uh, for, for wood. So right now we're producing 22,161 cubic meters of wood. Now, you'll notice that there's a big light blue section to the right of it, and that's, uh, that's your actual capacity. That's the actual full amount you're able to produce if you went into 100% capacity. So right now we're only doing, basically we're, we're producing enough for, for our demand, um, which is in this case the dark blue amount. But the capacity we have is 66,550 cubic meters of timber. So we're not 100% using our full capacity. We're sitting at, what, about 33%? of uh, we're sitting at 100% demand which is 33% of our uh, production capacity which isn't too bad but that tells you right there that 44,389 basic cubic feet of timber could be created additional to what you have right now so that is the full amount that's going quote unquote to waste or that's the amount that's unused so we have people that are in these locations that are just sitting around not cutting down wood so we could go in and, for example, turn off some of these facilities and basically create a little bit of unemployment um, or leave them open. Kind of depends on how, where you're sitting with your GDP and inflation and all that stuff and what you want to do. But overall, we're producing the amount of, of timber we need right now internally to ourselves. Um, so the civilian demand is 21,765 cubic meters. We are actually using... 21,765 cubic meters. There we go. Not too bad, right? Pretty easy, pretty simple. So your production is broken up into demand and consumption. The one you actually can do that, which I'll show in a moment where you can change it. But if your demand, say, is under, so your actual usage here is under your production, you can change it quite easily to save yourself some money in production and, and all that stuff. Stock, that's just so much how much you actually have in stock and basically in stock root in like warehouses to use. So if you do massive trades and you're holding on to it, basically there's a warehouse somewhere in your country that has all this or multiple warehouses. Uh, it'll show you here in uh, two separate things here. The first one is reserves. This tells you at your current rate of consumption, you have 51 days of reserves. And then below that, it'll tell you sustainability. This is the ability for your country to either produce or sorry, that to produce said material. So for example, we're self-sufficient, meaning that we actually can produce our own timber and have no problem. And at this moment, stocks wise, we have 51 days of, of, of stocks and reserves to use just in case. Now, one thing I like to do is every now and then increase production, do a massive amount of production all of a sudden to kind of stimulate the economy and then go back into going back in demand. So our stocks here increase, which also gives us the ability to sell some stuff internationally. And down here is trades. So this is the amount we're currently trading. Now, if you can hover over this thing like we are now, and it shows you the current top importer and top exporter of said material. So right now, the top importer for wood is China. Top exporter for wood is, is Russia. And our previous day trades is zero because 
uh, the game's paused and I just started. <laughs> so it will show you the day before how much money you made in trades. And it will actually show you negatives if you go in the negative trade. So on the right here, as I mentioned, I'll show you the ability to change. Oh, and I wanted to mention, um, there's two colors for this as well. There's dark red and light red. Dark red is the actual demand. Or sorry, actual use. That means that's the amount you're actually using. So right now it says 21,765. Say, for example, we could only produce 21,765 cubic meters of, 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 of timber. And say it went up to 30. It would be just like the production tab here. Except production would be actual use in dark red. And then the actual demand would be where capacity is, which would be the second amount. But that would be in light red, showing you, hey, um, we're actually, we actually need four. You know, we actually need 41 metric tons of timber instead. So then below that, it will show deficit. It will show you actually how much of a material you need, or unmet in this case. So you're actually unmet, you did not meet X amount of tonnage of, of timber, which we'll get into later on because it can cause issues in other places if you're not meeting certain quotas of, of material, which we'll get into in trade arrangements. But on the right here, we're going to go into things a little bit. So to change this here, light blue, dark blue, it's just simple capacity or demand. So capacity is the full amount you're able to produce in a, in a country at any given time. Right now, our estimated amount obviously is 21,161 because we're sitting on demand. If we were to change it, to capacity, it shows us we're only producing 33%, 33% of what we can do. So you actually can actually click and drag and it, you'll see that it shows you right here what you're able to actually produce. Demand automatically defaults to the default amount there and then capacity, obviously, there you go. And it will show you on the screen how much your uh, reserves will be. And here you can actually produce or modify your uh, domestic price. So for example, you're having issues with your economy where you need it to slow down because your inflation's getting too high. Um, you can modify the domestic price by cranking up the domestic price for wood. So when people want to build their decks, their fences, build another house, build an extension to their house, whatever they want to use wood for, um, they have to spend more money because, well, they have more money because the GDP is up pretty high. Next one is, so this just shows you right here. Right now, our only consumption for timber is civilian demand. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, consumer goods. No, which one needs wood? Oh, they, did they change it? Oh, geez, they must. Did they? Oh. Okay, I sorry, I thought earlier that... Uh, Timber was also utilized for uh, for buildings, for uh, for consumer goods and things like that. But I'm wrong. Anyways, you know what? I always thought that. Then again, like I said, sometimes you yeah, have a mind whiff. So with that in mind, we get into uh, world statistics. So this will show you who the top importers are and the top exporters are. They show you what the top three, six, seven, eight, top eight of each. You can also change it, so the highest consumers and the highest producers. So here are the top eight producers, and here are the top eight consumers. So you can also target specific countries as well, if you if you want to. So you can kind of play the, the world market that way. So that's the world statistics button. Here is the import options. Now, if you tell your minister to just import opportunities, you don't have to worry about the screen, or even if you tell the uh, your minister... Hey, don't worry about it. I got it and lock it out. Then you really have to pay attention to these things. These things are a daily modification. You'll be modifying these every day, depending on what prices are and stuff like that. And this is basically the the world market. So right now, for example, our current markup is 7% on timber. So we're selling them at 80. So we can modify our own price here. And we'll show you. We're at a loss here, right? We're losing money. We're gaining money. What have you? This is the maximum amount we're going to do our box, uh, bark, uh, bulk sales on. Now this stuff will just sell automatically, and you'll see it just here, just automatically go up and down, because it'll just be background trades constantly. Because every country's 
you know, going to buy, sell, or whatever. Um, every now and then you'll get, I mean, here you'll get countries offering to buy something or sell you something, but you're going to set this up as well, and it just kind of goes. You can also tell it, see, auto sales, how much you want it to do and how much you want it to sell of your uh, of your production. So basically here you tell it, okay, the maximum amount of this 1.1 million metric, or sorry, uh, cubic meters of of uh, of stocks. Well, I want to sell a maximum of say 13% of our surplus, the amount in our stock here. The maximum I want you to sell in any given time is 13,610. And these are all just one-time sales. They're not like spread over days or months. It's just boom, multi one sale of 13,000 tons, or even like eight tons, five tons, whatever, or for metric feet. Or even tons. And here is the price you set. And there you go. So right here, if we start selling stuff, we're losing 1% every ton we sell. Because the current market price is $81. Now, this is also the way that you can actually modify the world market slowly. And this is the way to play the market, basically. You can sit back with this screen, with these screens. I would kind of wish you could have more than one open. And play the markets. Produce your goods and drive up prices for certain commodities and reduce the prices for others and really, really mess up countries economically. And then kind of try to swoop in, right? So this, as I said, is the exports. This is where you can kind of mess around with people. Imports, this is where you buy stuff yourself for your country. So your auto purchases. So it's like, okay, well, buy up to, well, let's go up to 110. Well, right now, the, the overall price is 81 So you know what? I only want to pay 80 So I'll only take a price if it's $1 less than market. Right now, the market availability is excellent for timber. Okay, so you know what? Fuck it. Let's go down to, say, $65. The max I want you to spend is 76 And the max amount of units I want you to buy is, say, 4000 I mean, We have 121000 right? So now, the AI in the background, not the minister, the AI, like the actual game itself, will look and say, okay, well, you know, Finland is offering, you know, 2,000 tons, you know, is offering a max sale of, say, 2,000 tons at 65. So it will buy two times 2,000 twice. It's pretty good. Um, like I said, in this way, you're able to really, really kind of fluctuate the market very, very and manipulate the market. The AI basically just kind of does whatever it can do to make a little bit of money here and there. Um, but you can really, really mess with the market and it can get, it can get fun. It can also get really frustrating and it can get a little addicting because it's almost like playing the stock market. And then here you can actually build your, your facilities. So now that we're talking about automatic, like auto trades, where you basically just say max price, all that stuff. You can also pick a country, as I mentioned earlier, and do a trade. So right now with Finland, we have a trade arrangement with Finland. Right now, I'm giving them, for 90 days, 1,818 cubic meters of timber a day. They gave us their money already, which is no big deal, right? I mean, we've got, you know, some odd million, so we're good. Now, a couple catch-22s with this. When you sell someone a commodity, you need to remember two things. One... Nine times out of ten, the country wants to pay up front because they want to get the price that's on the market right now. If you try to go 90 days, 30 days, 60 days, even seven days, you're not going to get as much money. Uh, in conjunction, the more you offer, the lower the price. That's the other thing, right? The, the infamous, you know, bulk discount. As well, if you do not have enough resources to make a trade, and you just go, you know what, I'm going to just give you a trade and, you know, whatever. I, I don't have any timber, but what I want is I want your money. So you make a trade arrangement telling them that you're going to get all the timber and all of a sudden, boom. You get however many millions of dollars from, say, Finland. You have no timber and you just sit there and laugh. Like, you're not getting anything from me, so fuck you. It's actually incorrect. They're going to get timber from you. You're just not going to like it. So, how did they get it? Well, firstly, you'll see this go away but the 89 part but it'll still say daily timber that much 1800 uh, square meters what will happen is you're actually going into a trade deficit meaning that you owe them 
that much. It won't tell you how much longer you owe. You basically will just pay paying timber every time you get it. Your country will not be able able to get timber at a certain point anymore. Because what will happen is timber will come into your country and immediately get sent over to Finland. Or not even to you. Any any trade arrangements you make with tim- for timber, you get it, it automatically will go to Finland. And basically until you either break ties with Finland or buy out the contract, basically. It's pretty hard to get out of a trade deficit because you'll owe them the money and the resources. So what will happen basically is out of that 1,800 meters cubed, it may end up getting, say I only do a 90-day contract and said, fuck you, I don't care. And I just sit there and I'm importing timber at a higher rate than this. They'll still take this much timber a day from you. Pretty much till eternity. Because you owe them and there's interest on basically the timber. And you're pretty much SOL. The only way to get away from it is to break all ties with the country. And I mean break all ties with the country. Like you basically have to just pretend they no longer exist. Now that does horrible to international relations with a whole bunch of countries. Because if you do a trade with someone, say Finland here, and we give them, we, we ask them for tons of money in return for tons of resources, and then we never give them the resources, and instead take their money and then break all government ties with them, they're never going to want to deal with us again. No matter what you do long term, they're never going to like you. And I mean that in the confines of non glitching the game. And I mean that by like spamming the nuclear attack and support options, things like that. Um, in the end, one of the few ways is that to give them, say, for example, a ton of money to kind of apologize for it. But you need to give them a lot of money over a long period of time to get them to like you. And believe me, it's not as good as it sounds. So that's one way. Now that's the, the main thing you have to worry about, sorry, about this as an option. So when you do trading, always remember not to overtrade. And if you trade a lot, always remember the more you trade with a company or country, the less money you make. The the infamous Costco deal, right? The more tonnage I give you, the less tonnage I get back, the less money I get back. Uh, so that is that, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Uh, that is production, use, stocks, trades, and actual trades themselves. If you have any questions associated with these things, um, leave a comment in the description below. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention too, actually, well, is uh, the next video will be specifically on debt um, associated with your country. Um, one thing you have to remember is for one thing for daily expenses, um, production usually is a big cause of some stuff, but um, sometimes you'll get a little markup here, seeing you're having a shortfall. That could be a shortfall in money up here temporarily, but we'll get into that in another episode. Until then, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.